Hello and welcome back to more Persona 5 Royal, where last time we had a fun day at the park and we met... <laughs> who may very well end up being my favorite character in the entire game. I can't say that definitively because we still have about 19 hours to... No, that's that's generous. 1900 hours to go in this game, so... I can't say definitively that she'll be my favorite character, but so far... Gonna be hard to beat, gotta be honest. So, yeah, yesterday was a fun episode, but today, the game plan for today is to go to... The, to start off with, we're gonna go to the clinic and go spend time with, uh, with Takemi, because, as you may recall from the end of the last episode, we tried to call up, uh, <clears throat> a certain someone, who shall remain nameless, with the intent of seeing what exactly spending time with her would entail, out of morbid curiosity, and also because I've been told in the comments that her confident ability is super mega ultra overpowered, so I might have to suffer through some really insufferable stuff, to get it, but if, if it gives me an overpowered ability, it'll all be worth in the end. So, but the, we couldn't call her because we didn't, our gut stat wasn't high enough, so a surefire way to increase our guts is to spend time with Takemi. He says it again, I would like to do a clinical trial. In that case, my little guinea pig, there's something I want to test out today. I feel like I'm becoming closer, yeah, yep, yep, yep. What are you gonna do, we gonna hang up with Takemi? Sure, because engaging in these clinical trials and putting my life at risk every single time, which will probably kill me at one point, eventually, is, uh, a surefire way to increase our gut stats, so we're just gonna do this. If you feel okay, you can go home now. The phone. The phone is ringing. Dr. Takemi's clinic, clinic of internal medicine. What? Again? That's... Well, that ship's already sailed, so... <sighs> what a pain. You remember that girl from the other day? The chief of staff, Oyamada's patient? Her dad's been bringing her here to be treated, even though I referred them to another hospital. I even told them about the medical error I made. Um, well, I mean, they trust you, so... I... It's, it's, may, typically speaking, it's a good idea to go to a doctor you trust. I'm just a quack, though. Hmm. The medical error was well documented. Everyone in my field knows about it. I led the development of a new drug for an incurable illness called Crawford Ends Disease. Although I wasn't the one who administered the medicine, it was the cause of the error. With Crawford and certain cells indiscriminately attack other cells throughout the body. When it reaches the muscles, the patient slowly begins to die. There hasn't been much progress made on it, partly because there haven't been any many cases of it. I worked with a pharmaceutical company that had reached the final stage of production, but one day I was suddenly removed from my position. That chief of staff, Oyamida, my superior at the time, took over the entire operation. I don't know if, I, if you wanted the glory of developing a new drug or to become rich and famous, but he made careless mistakes and rushed completion so he could use it on a patient named Miwa. Miwa-chan had a reaction and lapsed into critical condition. The chief panicked and laid the blame on me. Wow. Wow, so... He's just... Absolutely terrible. Jesus. That, <sighs> yeah, so... If you make a mistake... Th this should go without saying. If you make a mistake, own up to it. Own up to what you did. And take responsibility for your actions. Because this is just... There's no... T there's no... There... Oh, wow, I mean, so... Like, we knew from the outset that there was gonna be a deeper backstory to Takemi that would involve... Like, obviously her heart would be in the right- even despite her external appearance, she, her heart would be in the right place. Or I guess, not external appearance. How- despite how she presents herself with the whole, my little guinea pig talk, it's- it's- she clearly had some- her heart was in the right place, and the, the clearest demonstration of that was in the last encounter we had with her, where she made- she did what she could to actually rescue the- or not rescue- that's a little overdramatic. Just to help- to help treat the girl who came in here. So, we knew there must have been something going on that would explain why she was re relegated to being out here instead of working at a major, uh, a major clinic or something like that. And there's the answer. Because of some straight up bullshit is, is why she's here. Because she did everything right, and then her superior was like, Oh, I can't have the blame placed on me because that would make me look like a fool, even though I was the one who made the mistake. So let's just blame her. Well, what does that affect me? What do I care? Yeah, that's called a shitty thing to do. No matter what I said, I couldn't change how they felt about me. Um, I had no idea. That's fine. It doesn't matter. The venom of the medicine was suspended, so I had no reason to stay at that hospital. As now I can keep working as a general practitioner on my own terms with my guinea pig. Oh, what fun for me. That's the medicine I've been trying on, out on you. This version is in the final stage of testing. It's searching for those cells that take the, the offensive and destroys them upon detection. That's why it's harmless for people who don't have the disease. Probably. Well, that's good. I hope. You have, a, you have a lot of faith in me. I have even more- uh, Well, I, I mean, you- Up until this point, you could have called it blind faith that you weren't gonna kill me. Uh, but now I have actual faith, because now I know that the- 
tough persona you're putting up is just a facade and that you you do act, you actually do care and you know what you're talking about and it was just that you got screwed over by some by a higher up who couldn't stand to have to have a have his mistake be public record and honestly it just makes you look so much better like obviously what the mistake he made is a terrible thing that happened and, and the, you, you you can't defend a mistake like that that's you you can't make mistakes like that in the field in which you work when you're dealing with people's lives there is no room for error there uh that said, optically, like, you, you can't change the fact that you made the mistake and that's going to tarnish your reputation forever. But optically, in the two scenarios where in one scenario you do the bad thing and then you apologize for it and own up to what you did, and in the other scenario where you do the bad thing and you just kind of, like, try to shove it under the rug or sweep it under the rug and pass the blame off to someone else, that makes you look awful, even worse than you already did. So, yeah. Oh boy, howdy. You better not flake out on me or flake on me this late in the game. I don't know that I don't know that I'd call this late in the game. I've I've heard that this game will take much longer than than I thought. I mentioned closer to the finish line, but I need your help to reach it. In exchange, I can offer you medicine at a special price. I'm counting on you, guinea pig. By the way, I just realized I, I sung the Wonder Pets theme and she's calling me a guinea pig. I didn't even I didn't even, you know what? It feels like my bomb with is growing even deeper. Alrighty then. Add support items to the inventory at the clinic. That's right. useful. Alrighty, I'll happily accept that. Hmm. Now, what should I do about that girl and her dad? Being mean and scaring them hasn't worked. I mean, so it, she, they trust you for a reason because what you did worked. That like, you know what you clearly know what you're doing. That if they trust you and you can provide the service they need, then there's no reason. There's no reason. There's no reason to convince them to go elsewhere. So, <laughs> I don't know. Just, just generally speaking, I, I would trust. A, a smaller clinic that gets to t takes the time to intimately know each one of their patients as opposed to a massive uh, a massive hospital where it's just an assembly line for them and you have the waiting lines that are massively overcrowded because they just can't process people into the into the hospital fast enough like I'll never forget when my when we were going to see a show a couple of years ago my family and I went to go see a show uh, when I was uh, a couple of years ago and my grandmother, when we were walking down the street to get to the show in time, she tripped and fell. And uh, honestly, I'm lucky. We're lucky she didn't hit her head. I. It happened so fast. She she fell down on the ground hard, but luckily she hit her. She 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 hit her arm on the ground before she hit her head. So if she hit the ground with her head, that wouldn't I. Uh, that night would have ended very differently. But thankfully, she her, she hit the arm. She hit her arm before she hit her head. Um, because it could have gone much worse otherwise, but obviously that broke her arm, so, and she was bleeding all the way down, so we immediately canceled everything, and we just drove her to the emergency clinic as fast, like, we drove her to the ER as fast as possible. The problem is that because tech, because her, her injury wasn't life-threatening, it was just a broken arm, it wasn't a priority for them, so we were sat in the waiting room for hours and hours, and, like, I get it, I, I understand, obviously, a broken arm is not a life-threatening industry, I just said industry, injury, obviously, priority needs to be placed, like, it's like, if you, if you come in with a heart attack, obviously, you're, like, you need to get them into the, into the ER immediately with hesitation, obviously, there's people that, like, you, there's priority in terms of how severe the, the, the reason why you're at the hospital is, that said, the degree to which hospitals, like major hospitals, are overstacked, in my experience, is is insane. Like I remember when I when I had a seizure a couple of years ago, um, I was rushed to the hospital. I was I was just sat in the in, in the waiting area for what felt like forever. I think it was probably like two hours, and I was just constantly seizing, like not continuously, but off, off on on again, off again. I was seizing on because they couldn't. There was no room to get me back there, so. Yeah, there's many reasons why I wouldn't blame them for trusting a smaller clinic as opposed to a more massive mainstream hospital. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. Moving on now. It's well since I've had to deal with this kind of nuance. It's stressing me out. I, th I think I misread that. I think that's a nuisance. Yeah, I completely misread that. Uh, oh, sorry. That's all I want to talk to you about. You can go home now. I feel like cooperating in that shady clinical trial has increased my guts. Well, that was the goal. And one of these days... We... Really? I was one... I was one off. Are you kidding? I. You know, I was one stupid right. point off, and then I could have. All right. Bye. Okay. Thanks for your hard work. That's it's, 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 it's whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Totally fine. You're doing okay, my little guinea pig. Just wanted to check up on you. Also, sorry for the long talk today. I was planning on telling you all that about what. Well, uh, so. 
all these things are acceptable answers. I, I thought at first it was going to be a memory test to see if you, were, if you could recall what she was t talking about, but she mentioned all these things, so I guess it doesn't really matter what we say there. Yeah, you're the first person I've really shit all that with, but it was also a good reminder. There, this is something that I have to do with as the plague. Thanks to you, the drug development is progressing very smoothly. If there are no issues with this latest sample, I think we're right on the edge of finally finishing it. Oh, sorry, also I got a patient. Maybe that girl and their dad came back. I have to go. See you later. Until next time. Alright. We're almost out of May. Just one more. And there's our classic response. What are you gonna do about Kabakami? Did you decide not to call it? Uh, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it, I got it. Should we do it? Should we do it now? Should we? Okay, you know what? Here, are there any crossword? There, okay, there's a crossword. So we'll, so we'll, we'll solve the crossword puzzle, and then we'll make up, and then, then we'll go give her a call, and see what the hell is gonna happen. Uh, Nihonga cultural artwork. Uh, I'm, so I'm guessing it's fill in the blank, is in terms of like fill in the question mark gap there. So the word, I'm, I'm, a, if, 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 so I'm gonna, I, I think it's this, not, no, 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 don't, well, I guess I can finish up here, but I'm, I think the answer is Japanese because the, if, it, if it's trying to identify a cultural artwork, it's, it's probably saying to, to which culture does this belong? And I'm, yeah, I don't know this for sure, but a little bit of basic logic and just looking at the letters to see if this checks out would tell me that this seems to be, um, no, don't stop going all over the place. It would seem to be, where's the S? I, I, I there's the S. I was blind for a second. All right, it was correct. It would seem to be that. Basic logic, uh, and just checking the letters to check out there. In contrast to imported Western art styles, paintings produced post-1900 use techniques developed within Jap Japan are referred to as Nihonga. Foreigners visiting Japan during the Meiji period called this Japanese painting, which the literal Japanese translates, uh, which the literal Japanese translate as Nihon Japan and Ga artwork. All right. I see. Wow, even I couldn't figure that one. Out. You haven't you haven't been able to figure out a single one of these, so nice. at this point it's starting to lose its impact. All right, so I guess now we got to make up for yesterday by actually going to uh, by actually going to call to give her a ring. Oh boy. All right. This is such a bad idea. This is such a bad idea. This is not going to end well. But you know what? Let's give it a shot. Shall I call the maid delivery service? Oh. Why not? What could possibly go wrong with this ingenious plan? Hi. No. Oh. Oh, wait, it's you. Well, it'll be 5,000 yen with a request fee included, you know? Is that okay with you? Sure. Why not? I, mm. I see. Very well. I'll head, I'll head over right away then. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. So, this is your room, huh? Hmm. How do I put this? Uh, never mind. So, what kind of kid are you? The way you opposed Mr. Kamoshida, I'd say that you're earnest and have a strong sense of justice. And we did call ourselves the Justice Aces. That being said, you called a maid service and requested me? Because I've been told that you have a very broken confidant ability, and I was morbidly curious to figure out what the hell this was going to entail. Um, and naturally, neither of those answers are what I'm allowed to say here, so, uh, also, neither of these are even true. So I guess, I, you know, th these are both crap answers. I see. Oh, that's right. You have a criminal record. Okay, then how about this? I'll let you skip class a few times. It's tough not having any place where you belong, isn't it? However, I reserve the right to change my mind if your grades drop. And in exchange, you won't tell anyone that I'm moonlighting as a maid. Sound good? Sure. And it's a deal. I've made a deal with Kawakami. No, oh, ba uh, back to the future again. Here we go. So I've wait, hold on. Well, we need to pause this first. So, so she because she always gives a nice intro before all the characters. So. D inf infiltrating all those palaces must be pretty stressful. You must have had some way to relieve your stress. How did you do that exactly? Cue the stupid 
Awaken Within Thou speech. To think you pulled off so many crimes while attending school. I can't believe you managed that by yourself. There had to be someone at the school helping you. What do you have to say to that? The same thing that's been said every other time. I am thou. Thou art I. Thou hast acquired a new vow. It shall become the wings of rebellion that breaketh thy chains of captivity. With the birth of the temperance persona, I have obtained the winds of blessing that shall lead to freedom and new power. Allows you to perform various activities in Kawakami's club. What the hell does that mean? All right. What the f Okay. I-, I alright. Sure. I mean, I feel like we already do that because we text with our friends all the time. With one of my students. Well, I guess I should get going. Okay, thank God. Oh, please request me if you need any help with your housework, okay? Stop, stop suggestively saying things. I don't need any help. That's clearly not true. Come on, we know each other's secret, and it would put my mind at ease. I don't need anything about myself to be put at ease by you. Besides, I'm... Uh, Stop talking. I'm considered over the hill for this type of job, so I don't get requested that often. I'll show my appreciation by making it easy for you to ditch class. Oh my god. Just think about it, okay? Master. All right, Master. That'll be it for today. Does 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 he not see this exchange happening? Is he not behind the counter right now? No, I guess not. Promising you won't tell the school about this. Okay, for both our sakes. Absolutely no talking about main stuff to anyone. It'll be our little. It'll be our little secret just for Becky and Master. Okay. Shut up. I. Please stop talking like that. Is what I really want to say, but this. I'll make sure to keep my promise to- oh my god, wah, <laughs> pain. Only pain. This- this confident ability better- damn well better be worth all this shit. And don't forget to set up your exams, okay? If you waste all your time playing around, your grades will suffer. Bye. See you later. Alrighty then, that sure was a thing. Honestly, that, that was honestly- th that, that was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but hey! We made it to June! Achoo! Can hold it in, you have to make some kind of excuse for me. Now for today's train news. Today's headlines are... Employee posts nude chef selfie. Wild Duck Burger claims to have fired the employee in question. Those close to the man voiced their surprise, vouching for his seriousness at work. Is Shibuya unsafe? Crime rising. The police are issuing warnings for people to be wary of scams. Hotspots of Tokyo. Tickets for the Monorami exhibit are available until June 5th. The Monorami exhibit goes on until June 5th. That's the end of this week. We'll show him what a change of heart means. I think we already did that. I, th I think now it's all up to him. Which, by the way, is he gonna confess soon? Maybe? I don't know. The pollen's bad today. I bet it's affecting mementos, too. Hey. Can you tell the others about the targeted mementos? I don't. I, those are just side quests, I'm pretty sure, so I don't really feel the, the pressing urge to do that. What I do feel the pressing urge to do, though, is try to hang out with someone. If we can... Um, I I was planning on hanging out with Ryuji because we, we hung out with On and we hang out with uh, Takemi. We haven't hung out with Ryuji recently, so I don't. I, I was planning and I was hoping there was gonna be a text message from him, but there appears to not be a text message from him, so I guess that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Uh, oh wait, uh, there's a blue thing here. Is like, hey, ask and thou shall receive. He's literally right here. I'm not digging all this sitting around crap. Hey, uh, do you remember that guy Yamauchi was talking about before? The mini Kamoshida. Yeah, that's him. Well, he's gonna be the new track team advisor. He don't give a rat's ass about the sport, though, or even the students. He, so you see, I heard this rumor. Apparently he's gotten in trouble at school before with his drinking, but that hasn't kept him from going out. I was thinking that maybe he'd let some shit slip when he's drunk. You should really try and tail him sometime. I look in, I'll look into where he goes to drink. Uh, this sounds like stalking. What's the plan for, for today, though? You gonna train with me? Uh, I feel like I can become- yeah, sure. Sure. What do you plan on doing? Wanna hang out with Ryuji? Sure. I mean, that's what I came out here to do. It's a good change then. We can meet at, uh, somewhere's gotta be open. Let's start looking around at school. Hmm. Really don't got a good place to train, huh? I mean, we'd probably run into him and then if we stuck around here. Got any ideas? Uh, we could 
we can train at my place? I don't know that this is a... You know what? Let's, let's do this. Out of sheer curiosity. How is this gonna go? Um, we're gonna come home and he's gonna be like, oh, you're back. And then we're gonna tell him we're gonna, we're here to train and he's gonna lift an eyebrow. Let's let's see how this goes. So does we get any training done there? Probably not, but I think it'll be funny. So let's go see what happens. I bet we just end up eating ice cream and playing video. Do we even have a video game console? I mean, I know we have a VHS player, uh, or or something like that in the in the room upstairs with a TV. But I don't. I was not aware that we had a game console. That's just kind of what happens, you know. I guess it won't hurt to peek around the gym. If they ain't there, then maybe we can. Oh. Takeshi, what the hell are you guys doing? We just have a few questions for him here, and that's none of your business. So what, you're gonna ask him questions with your fists? And anyways, ain't that in the three-on-one kind of cowardly? The only coward here is him. All the shit Kamashi to put us through is his fault. He was telling that bastard secrets about us the whole time. What? That's a load of bull! I feel like you should have more faith in him than that. The, the saying there's no time for arguing is gonna do shit. That's right, you've been training together for freaking forever. Plus, ain't the track team coming back? You don't gotta fight. Shut up. The best counter argument. I'll tell you, this piece of shit sold us out. Okay, evidence. How do you think Kamashita found out about your parents, Sak Sakamoto? He's gotta be a snitch. Whoa. Is that the only possibility? I, we need, I need more than just that. Out of the way, Sak Sakamoto will beat the shit out of you two if we need to. If you think that's gonna make you feel better, go for it. But you're gonna wish you didn't. Trust me, it feels real bad looking back on shitty stuff you've done. Huh? Look, even if he was working with Kamashita, ain't it fine now? The bastard's gone, so you can just put this crap behind you. There's no reason to fight, yeah? We can't keep people around who are going to try to undermine our team. I... I didn't do anything. I wasn't working with Kamashita. No matter how much you hit me, my answer's going to stay the same. Oh yeah, we got proof. Uh, okay, well then why didn't you open with that? I... Generally, when you're trying to prove a claim, you want to open with the evidence so your claim has, has value. So that you don't just say, this is this is this, and then, oh, uh, well, okay, so then I say, where's your proof? And it's like, oh, we don't actually have any of that until, but later I will have some. It's like, maybe you should have opened with this earlier. Yamauchi told us all about it. Huh? Yamauchi? Come on, t t we gotta get out of here. It's, it's, wait a minute, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, the guy who we, we labeled Mini Kamashita, who's now rising to the position of Kamashita, is telling you, really? You, you're gonna take his, really? That's what you're going for? Shit like you isn't welcome on our new team, our new track team. You better remember that. What the hell? Okay, so those guys are just great, eh, idiots? What the hell is all that? Just stay out of this. It's nothing to do with you. Uh, unfortunately, now it does have something to do with us. But... When you hit Kamashita, you were really hitting all of us who tried so hard to endure his bullshit. You might have felt relieved, but it only made life harder for us. Because of you, we lost the one place we could vent our frustrations. The one place we could really belong. Tensions got pretty high after that, and things have just been kind of rough from then on. You really think it's all fine now, huh? Well, what if I told you they're right about me? Would you still think it's fine if I was the one who told Kamashita about your parents? Well, it doesn't matter because we believe that that's not true, so that's a, that's a pointless hypothetical. Yeah, if you told them, you told them. I'm over all the stuff with my parents anyway. Hey. Besides, I realized something. I might have messed up with Kamashita back then, but hanging on to the past isn't going to help anything. I'm just going to focus on being myself now, on being free. What are you talking about? Free, huh? <laughs> Well, that was a conversation. You know what I'm trying to say, yeah? I mean, I, yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say, but that everything about that conversation was just... Oh, boy, howdy. That was a... That, yeah, you're right. It wasn't making any sense. That was a useless hypothetical to bring up. Hmm. I guess being free is like... It's like how I feel when I'm talking to you, man. Uh, I, I, get, I get what you mean, but I guess we have to have you explain it. I don't know how else to explain it. I just feel free. These are such crap options. What, we stuck on reef or something? Ha ha ha. I feel like my problem with Ryuji is going deeper. That was weird. That was a very bizarre conversation we had. And we are ranking up really fast with these guys. All right. Actually, what if we... You know, let's see if we can just get up... Try to increase as many of their ranks as possible. Because if, if, the quicker we get them up, the, the, the better we'll be able, they'll be able to do. Man, that was some funny shit. So much for training, though, huh? Come on, let's get out of here. We should... Excuse me, grab ramen on the way home. I'll call up Gumshoe, too, while we're at it. Okay. Yo, you good right now? All that mess with my with the track team. Guess I was right about my gut feeling. And he can get really stubborn sometimes. So he'll keep his mouth shut whether or not someone's punching him. Um... 
Sounds like you two were close, just like you. So he should have punched back. Uh, so these options are all crap. The first one is useless, because it's obvious. This one is unnecess unnecessarily antagonistic. I guess this one. Oh, hey, that's not what I'm saying. No violence, period. I thought you were supposed to be the pacifist here. Look, I'm, I'm just saying there's gotta be another way to solve this instead of just going dark. And that bastard Yamauchi's name came up again. I swear, something about that dude is so shady. That's it. I'm gonna do a full investigation. I'll help you find... Oh, I get... Okay, I guess we're doing this now. Alright, that came out of nowhere. I guess we're doing... I guess we're investigating... Freaking that guy now. Okay, cool. Uh, you're back. Classic as always. That was... Okay. So, to recap... Uh, potentially that guy was snitching on everyone in the team to try to get in good grace with Kamashita, which I we can't so they I, I they they said we have proof and that proof is that the successor to Kamashita, who everyone calls mini Kamashita, whose interest might not be with the students right now told them that it was him who told Kamashita things talk about unreliable sources Jesus Christ so I guess now we're getting to the, we're gonna try to get to the bottom of that Alrighty then. I assume you all are curious, so I'm sending you an update just in case. My arm is still bedridden and has broken a single word. My apologies for not being able to provide anything more solid. Come on, it's not your fault. Don't worry about it. It is June already, though. The, ex the exhibition will be ending soon. Unless it doesn't seem like Monorami has had a mental shutdown. There's no point if he doesn't have a, if, a change of heart and call off that legal action bullshit. Was this how it was when you defeated Kamashita? Pretty much. We waited a while. Kamashita was out of school for a while. Either way, there's been no palpable progress. It appears that only the target themselves can tell whether or not their heart has changed. Yeah, I yeah, that's kind of how that works. You, 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 you can, you, the only one who knows wh whether or not what you believed changed or not is you. So, doesn't really, like, you, you can try to convince other people what you believe, like, you can, you can put on a, a, a facade to say, that, to, to try to convince others that you believe something that you actually don't, and you might be able to convince them that you've changed your mind from believing one thing to believing another thing, but ultimately, you're, the only one who's going to actually know whether you really changed your beliefs is going to be you, which is the most self-evident thing ever, so I don't know why I even bothered to bring that up. We just got to hear from Adorami himself what the deal is. There's nothing we can really do, let's just try to waiting a little bit longer. Hey. About that stuff you got, well, the studio armor, I mean. It's the laundromat right next to the bathhouse, right? If we got to spare time, maybe we could wash them. You keep saying that? I don't... I've never really felt the urge to do that. I had a dream where I got sued and I had to go to court. I feel like I've gained some guts from this. What? Re really? I... I dreamed about Phoenix Wright, and I, I got guts from the- okay. Okay, we can gain guts from having a dream. Alright. Sure. Why not, at this point? I want to ask you something. Oh, for God's sake. What a lovely way to start the day by talking to Makoto. Why did Mr. Kamashita change all of a sudden? For Christ's sake, why are you asking me? He grew a conscience. Is what? that your hypothesis? It's yeah. still too sudden. I don't... I don't know what... I still don't know what you think happened. I, I don't know what... What do you think I did to make him do that? Because to anyone with a brain, what happened there is a man who's been doing horrible things like that for his whole life, probably, and has faced no repercussions for it, and has been basically just... Like, everyone's been turning a blind eye to him in the school from teachers to students... He finally snapped. He had a mental breakdown. All the, the weight of the sins he committed, the weight of the horrible actions he undertook, finally caught up to him, and they just started wearing him down. And he finally reached a point where he's like, I can't do this anymore. And he, he grew a conscience, and he realized, oh, wow, I'm a shitty person, and he had a mental breakdown over it. That is a logical thing to happen. Like, those things happen. People could have breakdowns where they just shut down, and they, and they realize that what they've been doing up until that point been, has been terrible. It's happened before. It's not an unheard of thing. I don't understand. I, I cannot wrap my head around what Makoto thinks we did. Because it's not, it's not like they know what the metaverse is, and, and they're suspecting that we're traveling to said metaverse. As far as they're all concerned, this is a normal world where there is no such thing as a metaverse, and, they're all, and we're all just living our normal lives. So, genuinely, what does she think we did? What does she think happened that led to Kamash that, that would have influenced Kamashita to confess to all his sins. I have no idea what she thinks happened. Especially- and I don't know why they would think it would- it would happen. Because 
they should, like, it's not, <sighs> I don't, because on the teacher's side, the teachers knew what he was doing, and they just didn't say anything about it. So it shouldn't be, like, it'd be one thing if they didn't, no, I was going to say it'd be one thing if they didn't know. Even if they didn't know what he was doing, it would, it, it still shouldn't be a surprise, because they, it would still be a matter of all the sins that he's ever committed, like, weighing him down, and he finally confessed to it all. But the fact that they did know makes it worse, because that means that they are, were aware of what he was doing, so, they, so this should have just been like, yep, the straw that broke the camel's back, it finally cut up to him, he finally broke down. This makes sense. I, I don't get the subplot. I believe it's only natural to think that something must have caused it. Why? Why do you think that? Well, that's fine. Thanks for your valuable opinion. I'll take it into And time. you... And why do you keep bringing up these topics and then dropping them like a hot potato? You are so useless. Why do you keep bringing... Like, you keep... You keep accosting me and accusing me of these things subtly and then running away from your accusations and then doing the same thing over and over again. That's really getting on my nerves. I don't understand what you're doing here. This is... You, you are a very shitty investigator. Oh, good God. All right. Well, that didn't get us anywhere. Well, I mean, it didn't get her anywhere either, so I guess it's net positive, net zero in the end. Actually, you know what we should do that we haven't done in a while is go work. We have, like, three jobs, and we have not gone to any of them in freaking forever. So let's actually do Let's actually go to one of the jobs um, where I think they're on Central Street. I don't even, it's been so long since I've been to these places. I don't even know where all of them are at this point. But I know... I. The beef bowl, is this the beef bowl shops? Not here. It's here, I think. Yeah, okay, so I, I think one of our jobs is here. One of our jobs is at the underground mall, I think, with the flower shop is here. So I guess, I don't even know where we, you know, let's, let's, just, go to the, let's just go to the flower shop. Uh, I mean, does, I, don't think, I don't think it really matters. Assuming I'm still employed, they, they could have fired me at this point for all I know. Um, let's, I'll work here, assuming I still have a job. Do I have a job? Looks like it. All right. Luckily, I haven't gone to work in over a month, but I'm still I'm still employed. The neighbors really starting to look good on you. Here. Here's your pay for today. Thanks. That got us somewhere. Come back in when you have the time. Happily. How are you feeling? I should work pretty hard today. I bet this job makes making gifts has boosted your kindness. I don't think I've worked hard at all, actually, but if you say so. I'll happily accept the the, uh, the compliment. All right. Something else I want to try to do is I actually want to go redo the Big Bang challenge because they said that there's there's stages of that. So we'll see we'll see if we can. Oh, we got a message from someone. Who are we gonna message from? Uh, am I available? Hmm. Actually, you know what? Should we do this or should? Because like my plan was to go to the the Big Bang challenge and do that. Um. Your conversation will reflect for that. Mm, that, that. That gave us a lot of money. Hmm. Uh, is it better to do this or to go do the... Actually, you know, let's... This is called... Good chance for efficiency and also get paid extra. That is a tempting offer, but I... Money has not been a problem for us, but w like we haven't been stilted by, by like monetary gates yet. We have been stilted by a uh, pro pro get progression gates as in like we haven't been reached the, the appropriate level yet where so I know that if we do the big bang challenge again we'll increase our stats excuse me for sure I think I ran past it again no I didn't it's down here I did not run past it let's go here and do this again assuming they'll let me do it again because they said there's different stages so let's see this time you can take the big bang challenge only 500 yen would you like to try it uh sure let's do it the difficulty of the mission will be increased. Let's give it a shot. Why not? Let's give it a shot. Certainly. Now then, go take a seat and good luck. Thank you very much. Okay. How big is this next piece of food gonna be? Whoa. Oh, it's great. Now it's two two pancakes. This is the gravity burger, a burger that's so large that it almost has its own gravitational field. Once again, this will be an easy feat to overcome. I how? I swear if you eat this whole thing. Now then. If you eat this whole goddamn thing, I swear to God. Look at that. Look at that thing. 
You can fit his entire his entire head inside that thing and still have some extra breathing room. Oh my god. And you ate the whole thing! How? Literally how? So you're gonna be spending the next 17 hours in the bathroom. That is insanity. Congratulations. I don't know how you've not vomited all that up yet. It's managed to catch- This is- Like these challenges- Because people do this stuff. People do these challenges when you eat like these insanely massive amounts of food. I don't know how those people don't throw up constantly. That just sounds- It just sounds like unnecessary- Like deliberately putting yourself in harm for no goddamn reason. And to the Burger Baron who defeated this challenge we present to you- our world famous Big Bang Burger on the house. We hope you enjoy the taste of victory. Enjoy your new rank as first mate. One mission still remains. I'll look forward to your next attempt at our challenge. Yeah, we're gonna give it a few days before we try that again. You defeated the Gravity Burger this time. You're incredible. You were so admirable taking on such a daunting task with that intense level of courage. Yeah, so we knew that was gonna raise our guts. But what else did it raise? Anything? Uh. Okay, something else. That raised our knowledge. Good. It also raised our charm somehow. I don't think that eating a burger of that caliber would have raised either of those things. Proficiency, I guess, maybe. But, you know, proficiency in burger eating is not... Well, I don't know if that's something to write home about. But if you say so... If you say so, game... You know, we should probably start actually, I, 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 we have like a, a thousand books. We were able to grab a seat. Why don't you read something until we get the, yeah, I was actually about to say, we have like a thousand books. We haven't read anything yet. Okay, which one should we read? Um, oh, right, the one we actually, the one we fin the one we started and didn't finish, we probably do that. After his death, the statue of Bucci became a symbol of Shibuya. The Bu Bucci go, the story about this dog makes me cry every time. So you finished reading Bujika's story. A dog who kept waiting for his master in Shibuya, huh? A noble and loyal friend to the end. I have to admit, this story moved me. Can't you read- can't you feel it warm in your heart, too? Uh, maybe if I could read it, but I could not- I did not read it. I- I was told about- re I, I was told that I read it, but I did not read it. Oh, we're almost to the station. I'd say that was sufficient use of your time. I feel like we've make- I feel like we've been actually making a lot of progress today. Not- not in terms of, like, progressing the story along or anything, but in terms of just doing th spending time with people- well, oh, I say that, as in I, I try to spend time with as many people as possible. We haven't spent time with On yet. We have, well, we spent time with Ryuji, spent time with Takemi, so... And, and we worked, we took the burger challenge. I feel like we're doing some good stuff today. Alright, everyone, quiet down. I'm changing my lesson for today. Instead of a regular class, we'll be reviewing last week's materials. I suggest you listen carefully. But don't think you can slack off, okay? I absolutely won't allow it, no slacking off. Hmm. Weird. Hmm. She's going totally against the curriculum. All that stuff about slacking off is a little too odd. Wait a second, is this what she meant by ditch class? I would have thought she'd let you leave the room or something, but I guess she can't really complain. Slacking off and- oh, great. The next big game mechanic, being lazy. With Kawakami's help, you will be able to slack off in class on certain days. Use this free time to do various things such as reading or crafting infiltration tools. However, you will gain knowledge by choosing to study instead. Please keep this trade-off in mind. Okay. Kawakami's been kind enough to give us this free time, so we better put it to good use. What's the plan? Sweet. Sleeping is an option, apparently. Well, there's no point in doing this. May as well just read. We got a lot of books to get through. What should we do next? Um, was this the one we've... I, I, I've lost track of these. I think this is the one we found in our room. I think some of these are the ones we bought from the from the bookstore. I think... Is this the one we rented from the library? I don't even know anymore. We have... I, I bought way too many books. We have way too many of these things. The rich quaked in fear as the poor rejoiced. Wow. Ishikawa Goman was a thief without peer, so he was a hero of the common people, huh? Hey, hey. I feel like at least one of these people would have turned to me and raised their hand and been like, the, the Joker's slacking off and not doing the task. Hmm? Oh, I didn't realize how long you've been reading, so how far did you get? So you see, you still have, you see, it seems like you still have some pages left, you should continue some other time. Hmm. That was great! We should thank Kawakami for this later. I... Don't we have an ongoing deal? I don't know that we we don't really need to do that. I don't I don't think thanks are necessary for an ongoing deal. Don't think that's part of the plan. But it sucks being stuck inside this bag. I wish you could take Lady Anna to do something. You keep telling me that. Yo, I've been looking into Yamachi lately. Thought I'd give you an update. Apparently, he's been hanging out at Monjayaki sh Mon Monjayaki shop a lot. Heard he gets real drunk there and brags to his coworkers. So perfect opportunity, right? If we can get close, we might be might, we might get some intel out of him. 
Ugh, good luck. I'm not doing this alone, you know? I'm gonna need your help, dude. He knows me, so I ain't gonna be able to get anywhere near him. But he wouldn't care about you. I bet you could even sit next to his booth if you wanted, probably. So, I'll let you know when I'm to figure out where he's going drinking. Until then, we're gonna put a hold on our training. Well, I'll be counting on you. Sounds like we'll be hanging out with Ruji for a while. I guess she'll have to be patient. Okay, well. Shouldn't you tell the others about the... You keep telling me that, but I don't feel the pressing need to. Alright. Well, since we appear to have hit a bit of a dull moment, I guess it's finally time to address the thing that everybody, and I do mean everybody, has been telling me about in the comments. So, it appears that for the time being, my most controversial take on this game so far is that I don't like um, the counselor at all. I don't like him to even a minor degree. I don't trust him. I don't trust Maruki at all. I think he's hiding something. And I have even further reason to believe that, based on some comments that I've received, which I'll go into in a second. So, I don't trust him. I, I see the way he talks to people, and I've seen those exact same deceptive manipulative tactics used on other people that I know in my life before, and I, I don't want to- I refuse to stand for it here in this game. However, uh, people have told me that there's some exclusive royal, royal content that was added to this game with Maruki, uh, that I will not be able to access unless I spend time with him. Also, I've been told that if I want to max out my confidant ranking with the person we met yesterday, who was awesome, I need to spend time with him. And I was told that if I spend time with him, I'll get the chance to kick his ass. Meaning that there's probably going to be a boss fight against him at some point, which I am all here for. So, with all that in mind, as much as I really don't want to do it, we're going to spend time with Maruki, just to see how it goes. But before we do that, I need to do the other thing that people have been telling me to do, which is fuse some personas. We've had a pretty uneventful day so far. We've had a very uneventful day, in which I mean we've, we've just kind of spent time with people, you know, got to know them a bit better. But in terms of making great progress in the story and all that, we haven't made such progress. So, I don't know if this is going to progress it forward today. I don't think it will, slash I don't hope it, or I hope it won't. I hope that I can, because it, sh it shouldn't progress time, right? Because the Velvet Room exists in a different dimension or whatever. I should be able to go through here. Um, and then just, like, do, like what I do in here will exist outside the flow of space and time, so it won't, it won't pa affect the passage of time in the real dimension at all. At least I hope so. So, mm -hmm. since you're used to coming here, you, sh you must be sure to be accustomed to infiltrating palaces by now. Somewhat. Regardless, you have yet to attain a truly simple number of personas. It's not the full potential of the power of the wild card. I suppose this is the prime opportunity to help further your rehabilitation along. To worry, this assignment is not mandatory. Think of it almost as a test of strength. What? Wow. We'll have you bring us the mask we specify. You gotta show us the persona we asked for. We would like for you to bring us a Jack Frost. Don't... I think I have one of those. That's too easy, just need to be a challenge. I wanted to have Mabufu too. Inmate. You got the inmate, bring us Jack Frost with Mabufu. Okay, the this will not be mandatory for your rehabilitation, but you will be handsomely rewarded for it. I encourage you to at least try your hand at this. Yeah, so I know I have a Jack, or at least I think I have a Jack Frost. Yeah, I have this, but does it have the thing you say it needs? I don't know how to check that. Um, oh, no, it doesn't have it yet. It needs to be low. Okay, so it doesn't have it yet. So that's good to know. When it reaches level 12, we need to bring this back here to get a reward. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully I don't have to trade it, and hopefully it just means that I can, like, show it to you, and then you can give it to me, that I don't have to, like, turn it over, that'd be nice. So, um, can I just talk to you to, like, fuse Persona? Like, if I talk to you, will you allow me to fuse Personas? Welcome to my Velvet Room, you need to do, uh, create new Personas, register some Personas, I think I just, I think this? Persona Fusion, okay, actually, no, before we do this, I'm gonna save before I do this. On the option to like colossally screw this up. Um, I still have business here. Yeah, hold on. I, I want to save in case I screw this up. So because I have no idea what I'm doing in this game, and I don't want to screw anything up, I've looked up a guide for what I need to fuse to get what I need. And the common thing that people the people say is that like the earliest look because I need a I need a counselor persona to spend time in order to actually, like, progress forward Maruki's, uh, per, uh, confidant rankings, and I don't have one of those, so I need to fuse one, and the common one that people tell me that I need is if, if I fuse Huapo and Pixie, which is annoying me, because I think I actually used to have a Huapo, and I don't have that anymore, probably because I got rid of it, so that's 
frustrating on my part. But I have looked up other things, and according to the guy I'm looking at now, um, what I can do is... It says that all, all consultant personae can be fused with a combination of, and it lists things such as Hangman Lovers, Hangman Moon, um, uh, Temperance Moon, Fortune Chariot, Fortune Faith, etc., etc., etc. Now, this doesn't, this doesn't say Hanged Man, but it, I don't know if it needs to, it just says Hanged. So, I don't know if that counts as a hanged man, but also I haven't seen anything else on this list that is just, that just says hanged. It's all just hanged man. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a chance and say that this constitutes the hanged man type, and I'm going to merge this with, I'm not gonna merge it with a moon in case I need a moon for something else later, but we have two lovers, uh, so we, I think we can, also someone told me that Pixie's crap and I shouldn't use her, so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fuse this with this, and I'm gonna hope that this does what I want it to do. It might not do what I want it to do, which would be bad if it did, but that's what we're going for. And also, I think I need a faith confidant to spend time with, um, what's, with, with the girl we met yesterday. So, and to get that, we need to, we need to fuse, um, we need to fuse Emperor, uh, and Chariot, which is not something I'm keen on doing, because that would, that would mean we have to get rid of the thing we can, that we can use to spend time with, uh, with Ryuji. But I think that's all we can do can do for the time being. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll cross the we'll cross bridge when we come to it later. Um, uh, yeah, so for the time being, we're just going to, we're just going to fuse the things I said. Okay, let's go to you. And Persona Fusion time. Uh, normal Fusion, I guess. Okay, so, I'm, I hope this works. We're going to do Hanged, and we're going to fuse that with uh, you is the plan we're going. No, sorry, not you. Where's the the what? All right, yeah, okay, yes. Th this checks out with what with what the uh, with what the thing says, which is that if I fuse this with either my lovers or with my moon, that will give me a counselor. So we're going to fuse it with Pixie to get that, and I'm gonna hope that that works out the way that I want it to. So uh. Yeah, let's give it a shot. You okay with this? Yep. Let's do it. Okay, is that it? Did we do it? I think that did it. Confirm. The skills you choose, oh, I have to choose. Personas possess unique properties known as traits. Traits are capable of being inherited during fusion. Should you make use of this properly, you can very well conclude with a nigh unstoppable persona. However, some special traits cannot be inherited. In any case, only one trait can be inherited during fusion, so choose carefully. Um, which trait will I select? Inc increase the chances of inflicting shocks to down foes. Of inflicting elements after a baton pass. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I think, I think we'll go with this. That sounds... What I, which goes I want to inherit? Uh, this would... This. This has been... Oh, already. Okay, that. It will receive a this. Go for that. Yep, go ahead. Why not? Let's, let's go for it. All, all I really want out of this is just a, just a counselor in general. Didn't really particularly care for the specifics and I think we then we got what we wanted out of this so I am content with these decisions I'm, I'm hoping that hoping this isn't gonna progress the day forward It'd be great if it didn't progress the day forward all right we have a kidney bean for a persona now I'm Kushi Mitama I'll bring some vigor back to your body come on let's check out this mysterious nature of the world Behold, the Council of the Confidant is awakening your Persona's hidden power. Alrighty. And that should be all that we need for now. We'll cut, we'll, so, okay, so that, it's good to know that that works. So I'm going to keep this list handy in case I need it in the future, which I definitely will need it in the future. Want to go back. And now that we've done that, we can go back to school. Alright, great. Time didn't pass. That's very good. I think we can just find, I mean, it makes sense for us to find him in school, right? So we'll go here. And spend time with Maruki as much as I really don't want to. What, I, I don't want to spend time with you, but what I do want is to kick his ass, to spend time with the girl we met yesterday, and to unlock the special royal content that everyone wants to see. So let's knock all those birds out with one stone. Oh, are you heading home? If you're okay with that, I'd like to... Oh, wait, actually, I need to actually... Uh, hold on. I should probably equip the thing. Hold on. I should probably... 
I, I just want to check to make sure that I, my thing's actually equipped before I go in there. Um, and it was, okay, good thing I checked. Get on, please, thank you. And then go to you. What's wrong? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. Let's, 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 let's chat it up. Help him out, thank you. Ah, great. Finish the counseling session, meet me in the nurse's office. I'm gonna walk around, let me know when you're ready to leave. It's probably gonna trap me here forever. Hmm. <sighs> I've been getting a lot of students coming in ever since I arrived here, so to be honest, it's been kind of a relief. The whole mess with Kamashita was the reason I was called here, after all. They warned me a lot of the students had been impacted and knew there would be a lot of free-floating anxiety. But when I actually got to talk to everyone, I was pleasantly surprised. Most of the things on everyone's minds were college entrance exams, relationship problems, in other words, typical worries for high school students. Some did open up major deeper issues, but not the majority. Some students were still struggling with the scars from the incident, yes. But at the very least, I'm glad the ones who came to me have taken some steps toward recovery. <sighs> so they have, huh? No thanks to you, I imagine. Not to say I've gotten a sense of every single student's emotional state. Either way, I hope my worries end up being groundless after all. I know I'm not the most reliable guy. Oh, trust me, we figured that one out. But remember, you can always talk to me too if something's bothering you. Yeah, I don't want to, you know. I'm the counselor here, you know, if nothing else, I'm good at listening. Let's... Having said that, it's a little awkward that I have to ask for your help, but... You remember how I asked you to help me with my research? Of course, I remember. I said you'd be helping me with my research, but don't worry, I won't be anything too difficult or intensive. I just need you to listen to what I have to say and work through some questions with me. So... But let's see, maybe I should start at the beginning. I can tell you a little about what this research is for. What I'm studying now is pain felt in the mind, or perhaps more fancifully, in the heart. Some specific examples include the pain of someone saying hurtful things to you, or being separated from those you love. Maybe this would be clearer. Pain defined by abstracts like trauma or stress. Bodily physical pain can be thought of as something necessary, an, an, an autonomic response to injury, illness, whatever. Still. But what about pains felt within one's heart? That pain isn't born from any tangible problems in our bodies, right? It's something strange and immaterial. I guess it goes to show there are still a lot of mysteries in our own hearts and minds. You know, I... And I... Well, I want to learn more about these, these internal psychological pains. Now, this is my question to you. When do you truly feel pain in your heart? Um... When th this... Would, when someone betrays me... When, when... When someone betrays me... Which, I it, like, it's dramatic to say it like that. A, a less dramatic way to say this is to just say, like, someone lies to you, someone is just, just emotionally manipulative to you, is deceptive to you, places their interest above your own despite trying to claim otherwise, uses you to their advantage, just basically treats you like you aren't a person or misuse, like, manipulates you, uses them to your, uses you to their advantage in the sense that they wrap you around their finger and just, and just, treat you like a tool rather than a person, there's just, because, uh, I guess, didn't intend on telling this story, when I was in middle school, there was, um, there was a girl who I, who I, who I had a crush on, and we, uh, there's, we, I eventually, there's more to the story behind what led to us getting together, but eventually, I asked her out, and she said yes, um, and we, we went out, we, we, we were together for about, uh, two weeks, I think? Yeah, two weeks. So, two weeks went by, and she was enthusiastic about dating me at first, or at least that's what I thought. But then rumors started circulating, and I, I had heard, I had heard some of the some of the other girls talking about how she was too good for me. Um, and I'm pretty sure the reason, and the reason why is because I was a, I was a stereotypical geek. I was a stereotypical nerd in the sense that I was very well versed in technology. I was very passionate about nerdy things like video games, movies, and science and things like that. I, like I was very, I was very much a nerd. I, I still, I was, I still am, and I always will be. And I'm, pr I like, it's it's a stereotype to, to denounce someone as oh you're just a nerd. It's like okay cool. I, I like nerdy things. Can you come up with an actual character criticism, or are you just gonna play into the stereotype while you're at it? So. And where she was, she, like, she was on the on the soccer team, she was the big star and all that, so... Um, I can see where they were coming from, like, why they would have arrived at the conclusion of thinking that she was too good for me. I don't think... I, I don't like to separate people that, by that, like, that's, that's such an arbitrary metric of being like, Oh, this person is the, is like, uh, the star athlete and whatever, and this person, likes is more into the sciences. As if there's an inherent hierarchy between the two where one would be better than the other which is nonsense but it's that's the thing i went i ranted about this before but the degree to which schools place in a heightened emphasis on athletic ability as opposed to uh more 
cerebral activities like like uh, science competitions things like that is absurd and I hate it I always have and I always will so I just I don't like that mindset but yeah that's if two people like each other I it doesn't really matter whether one person is a star athlete and the other person's a, a nerdy geek who's into science technology but that was the mindset that they had so I heard I heard people saying that and it didn't really matter it didn't really matter to me at all because I'm like okay so you're just ignorant fools whatever you can you can live your life and I'll live mine but what changed that was when uh, she started hearing those, because th the people who were saying that were people who she was friends with, and uh, she heard them, like she heard them say those things, and she uh, we broke up with me on February 14th, so uh, that was pain, but yeah, so that happened, and the, uh, the reason why I bring this up is because you might find it silly to, for someone to break up with someone else just because some people were saying mean things about the inner relationship. Well, I found out later, I'm, I'm, I'll skip all the middle stuff because there's a lot more that happened between points A and B, but the end result of this whole scenario was that we, uh, Neil and I found out at the end of the school year that the reason why we dated for two weeks and then uh, broke up suddenly was because cause she had just come out of a relationship before she started dating me. She probably should have taken it as a red flag out of the gate because she literally broke up with someone on one Friday and then the very next Friday we went out. Like, so we started dating. So red flag right there. That was probably a bad start. Like this was probably screwed from the start. But the way that this unfolded is that basically what we concluded and what she basically admitted was that, not, not to me, but she admitted to Neil, uh, basically that she didn't date me because she liked me, she dated me because she wanted to be able to have the, her, the social status of being in a relationship. Um, as in, like, she just, she wanted to be able to talk to her friends and be like, I have a boyfriend, I'm in a relationship, instead of just being like, I'm single. So yeah, she, she, she didn't want to tell her, she wanted to be able to tell her friends she was in a relationship. That's why she went out with me so quickly after she broke up with the other person she was dating at the time. And then, once she realized that dating me was actually harming her social status instead of raising, instead of improving it, because I was seen as the stereotypical nerd of the, of, of, of the grade, she dropped me like a hot potato. I also found out that in conjunction with all this, the act of going on a date with me in the first place was a dare. Someone dared her to go on the date with me because it was like, oh, I dare you to go, the idea being, you'll be going on a date with the loser science nerd over there. What a loser you must be. So, yeah, it was a whole lot of, a whole lot of crap that happened in middle school. And there's, there's, there's a lot more that happened between those, between points A and point B, point A and B in that story. That's, like I said, a lot of stuff happened in middle school. I could honestly go on, I could honestly have an entire podcast just spelling out the stories that happened in middle school because there's so goddamn many of them. But the point of this story is that I, I asked a girl out, and she said yes, and we went on, we were, we dated for a while, by which I mean two weeks, so it's not a while at all, but it's, it felt like a while for middle school, I guess. So, I thought it was because she actually liked me, turns out that it was because she was dared into it, and then because she wanted to be able to say that she had a boyfriend for, to try to improve her social status, and then when she realized it wasn't going to happen, she dropped like a hot potato, so yeah. Um, I don't like people who are duplicitous, or manipulative, or deceptive at all. I value honesty a lot, um, and th th there's a lot of things I value in a person, you know, like, compassion for other people, um, you know, loyalty is in, like, standing by the people you, standing by the people you love, and standing by the people you believe in, uh, passion for something, like, being able to have something you want to go out and chase, and having passion for something you do, or something you want to, something that makes, makes you want to get out of bed and be like, I want to do this thing, I want to go make a difference and do this with my life, and be like, yeah, it's awesome to see that you have that going for you loyalty, compassion, passion for something, just basic, you know, common sense and having a good head on your shoulders, and honesty, honesty, absolutely, just being honest with people, um, because if, if I can't, like, if, if I can't trust you to tell me the truth about something and to be open and honest, and by the way, that, that's not to say, like, if, like, if there's something really personal to happen to you and you don't want to tell people about it, that's, that's one thing, that's obviously, that's like, you want to keep that personal and keep it close to your chest, I get that, but that's, that's different, that's different from, Deli directly, deliberately lying about something to someone. Like, if you ask someone, did you do this? And then they say, no, I didn't, but they actually did. Like, that kind of stuff. That's, that's when it crosses the line. It's like, no. I don't, I can't, st I don't, I can't stand it when people lie about stuff like this. It, it drives me up a wall. It's like, 
How is anyone supposed to trust you if you can't be honest with people? It's just, it's ridiculous. Because that, that was the, that story I just told us kind of what opened my eyes to, 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 to truly how duplicitous some people could be. Um, middle school just in general opened my eyes to how duplicitous people could be. But that story in particular is what kind of made me go, oh, so d despite how nice someone might appear on the outside, they could be hiding a whole world of duplicity and manipulation behind the scenes. So, because she was very good at that. She was very good at manipulating people. She was very, very good at that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's my rant for the day. So that, that is my long-winded answer of saying that I feel pain in my heart when someone betrays me. I see. Yes, I can sympathize there. Sometimes all it takes is one betrayal for intense trust to turn into intense pain. It can be rough, but if it doesn't feel good, it's a struggle with pain in your heart. Oh, by the way, there are many other examples I could have chosen of people who were lying to me, or about me, or just being deceptive in general. That was just the most obvious example that I, that I immediately thought of, where I, 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 I immediately felt betrayed by someone. Um, but with that in mind, how about the pain of a broken heart, then? After all, the, that kind of pain is only born because we all fall, we fell in love, right? Do you have any thoughts on this kind of pain magic? <laughs> well... I kind of just went on a whole tangent about the pain I felt because that was that was like my first proper relationship. I, I had never I, I had never been in a relationship with anyone before that point. And I guess you I don't even know that you could technically call it that a, a proper relationship anyway because it lasted for two weeks and it was barely anything anyway. But it was the closest I guess I ever had to a proper relationship prior to that point. So that that was that was the first time where it probably probably felt like a relationship. So it kind of it was also someone that I that I that I had liked for since the beginning of sixth grade so yeah it, it was kind of it kind of stung a little bit and by a little bit i mean it stung a lot it kind of felt like a massive punch to the gut um because it felt like a punch to the gut just without knowing the deeper mystery behind like without knowing the deeper motive behind what happened it, it was a punch to the gut in and of itself because it's like i i i was so excited about this happening, and then two weeks later, it's all over in the blink of an eye. It's like, well, that hurt a lot. Um, and then the months go by, and Neil and I start to unravel the layers behind what was really happening behind the scenes with these people. Um, and there's a lot more that I didn't, I didn't go into that I'll I'm, I'll probably go into at some point later in the series with how this with how this let's play is going. But the, the the more layers we unravel, and the more we got to see what was going on behind the scenes with these people, and we we're like, oh, so these are just terrible people, which is an even bigger cut punch to the gut because it's like I. I really had a lot of respect for this person, and then it all just went down the drain, and I just kind of... It's kind of a blow to your self-esteem when you see how you were just manipulated for their own personal gain, and then like, a, like a tool, like a child's plaything that they just re they just use for their own personal enjoyment. Kind of sucked. But, I mean, I guess... I guess it's, it's things like that that make you appreciate healthy relationships even more. Um, it's just like, when I... Um, when I when I started up high school and I met for Guff 45, it was like opening my eyes to a whole new world of wow. So this is what it can actually be like when someone cares about you. It's, it's like so yeah. I'll have that story forever to tell about middle school of just the shit storm that was those three years of my life. Um, but it was kind of I guess it was a learning experience to kind of learn how people how bad people can be and just to kind of give me a scale to be like, this is how shit some people are, and it makes you appreciate the people who care about you even more, so, yeah, I, I guess it hurt in the moment, but in the end, it was a learning experience for me, so I guess, if I'm gonna be optimistic about it, I'll say this, I never took you for a poet, but it's a wonderful sentiment, a very positive way of looking at it. Internal emotional pain can be difficult to deal with, though some say it's always coupled with other feelings. And I agree, of course, I think it's a fair assessment. But personally speaking, I think if pain can be avoided, it should be. Oh, one last thing before I move on. It also didn't help that um, the, the the guy who she dated before she dated me was actively invested in us breaking up because he did not like the fact that he, um, that he, that we, that she dated me right after him. And if you want to hear an interesting story, because like, she, he, she, he hated me uh, because she went to date me immediately after she dated, he, uh, he, she dated him. So, when she broke up with me, he just accosted me. He's like, oh, I hope you enjoy your new not relationship. How does it feel, huh? How does it feel to be, to be rejected? And it's just like, wow, so you're just terrible. Now, thankfully, Neil was there to tell him to back off because Neil is just an absolute god among men. So, um, so he was there. He had, he had my back. He always has. He's always had my back. He's always been there for me. And he just basically told him to F off in middle school language. So, yeah, that didn't help things. But I guess the positive spin to that story is that once... 
once we realized that she was just manipulating people to her to her will by the end of middle school we kind of came around to each other and we're like you know what we we've had our ups and downs but in the end it was it was a while it was a fun ride and we kind of came we came around to each other i guess kind of bonding over our shared experiences over this whole debacle so yeah that just a little, little extra tidbit about uh, about that story <sighs> are we done now can we, can we move on with this i'm i'm I wasn't expecting to, for this many stories to p pop out of talking to this turd. Wounds of this, wounds of the heart are much harder to detect, and in a way, they're far more complex than physical injuries. You don't say. That's why I'm doing this research to save people from who are suffering from internal pain and they keep holding on to. You help me realize that purpose again. Thank you. Uh, don't worry about it. Right. Thanks to you all, I think I'll be able to better articulate my thoughts today. I can sense Maruki's gratitude towards me. All right. We done diddly did it. Your Council Confident has increased to rank 3. You will now earn more XP from Arcana Burst when fusing Personas of the Council of Arcana. Great. I think I'll do, I think I'll do for today. And uh, why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Oh, your mental training. My what? Oh, I know. I, I didn't forget about our promise, of course. I'll teach you tricks for mental discipline, and, and you help me with my research. Just like we decided, right? Now then, how about something like this today? Thanks to Maruki's mental training, my mind feels stronger. Oh, that's useful. Oh, and here, never bad time for a snack, right? I don't need... Okay, thanks. Okay, now we're ready to wrap things up. I would say that we are ready to wrap things up, because I was planning on... Uh, I was planning on calling things off for today. And, oh, the phone. The phone is ringing. Oh, this is Maruki. Do you have time to talk right now? I'm taking a breather. Just finished my last council session for the day, and I thought I'd thank you once again for your help earlier. Uh, good work over there. Thanks. A lot of students came by to talk today, so hopefully they got something out of it. But to be honest, it's pretty tough juggling this job my recent job at the same time. Thanks again for agreeing to help me out. Might be looking to you for help more frequently from now on. It'd mean a lot if you could lend a hand. Alright, see you later. Well, I guess that's another benefit. Uh, in addition to forwarding other social links. In addition to getting the overpowered ability, whatever it is. In addition to working towards the inevitability of kicking the crap out of him. I also, it'll probably open up an opportunity to share more middle school and high school stories. So, that's always a plus. Anyway... That's going to be what we're calling today. I think we made a lot of great progress today. Just as much progress as we can make in between palaces, I suppose. Uh, but the, the one, other, one other thing we need to do is I think I also need to fuse a Temperance Persona. Because I believe Temperance is what we need for, um, uh, for, uh, why, the name's like Kawakami. We need a Temperance Persona for her. And I don't know how to, cra I don't know how to fuse that yet. So I'm going to do some research off camera to figure out how to craft a Temperance per Persona. Uh... And then we'll go do that in the Velvet Room, and then we'll start the next episode by going to request time with her. So that's because I believe she also has an overpowered thing. So that's the game plan. So that'll be for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time to catch you all tomorrow for some more Persona 5 Royal. Goodbye.